Hello everyone, welcome to this week's webinar. I hope you are all doing well. Please let me know in the chat if you can hear me properly and let me know how you are doing. Maybe some of you have been on holiday recently. I hope you had a lovely time. Uh, I'm sure you know there was no webinar last week, so we are coming back today after the holidays, and I hope you are all well. Hello, hello. So yes, please let me know if you can hear me and if everything is all right. So, uh, bonjour et bienvenue à ce webinar ouvert à tous. Avant de commencer, pour ceux qui ne nous connaissent pas, je m'appelle Cécilia, je suis une professeure native et le Cercle des langues est une école de l'anglais en ligne pour les adultes. Nous, pr nous proposons des formations sur mesure en fonction de votre budget, de votre niveau et aussi de euh, vos objectifs. Et la bonne nouvelle, c'est que nos formations sont finançables par CPF. So, if you would like to uh, learn English, improve your English, please come and see us. So now let's get started with the webinar. So in today's webinar, we are going to be covering a topic that can be very challenging. It's something that most people will have to face at some point in their working life, but it's something most people don't want to have to deal with. And this is conflict. Now, conflict is, of course, when you uh, have a disagreement with something or with someone, perhaps you have different ideas, perhaps you have different points of view on how something should happen, and this can lead to conflict. Uh, and although conflict is inevitable, it's going to happen at some point, you can decide how the conflict uh, goes. Uh, there are good ways, there are better ways to deal with conflict, which mean that things don't get too serious. So uh, today we're going to be looking at some useful uh, expressions and vocabulary for you to help um, manage conflict in English. Perhaps you can tell me in the chat, is conflict something any of you have ever had to deal with? Have you had moments of conflict at work? Do you have any tips for uh, your, fellow, uh, your fellow students to, uh, on how you solve conflict at work? Or maybe any questions related to particular uh, issues that you have faced at work? Uh, do let me know in the chat. So uh, yes, let's get started. We'll be dividing our webinar into three parts today. First, we'll be looking at bringing up an issue. Then we'll be looking at having a productive conversation. And thirdly, we will be looking at finding a solution or moving forward. So let's get started. So to begin with, we are going to be looking at bringing up an issue. So of course, if you have a problem, if you notice that there is a, a particular conflict, uh, you are going to need to address it. If you want the problem to go away, you need to talk about it. So we're going to look at how you can uh, express uh, or tell someone that you might have a problem and talk a little bit about that problem. So first of all, we're going to look at some uh, descriptors that you might like to use when talking about an issue. So the first thing is, uh, the first word is unfair. So if something is fair, this means that it has a good outcome for both parties. There is no one person who is having a worse, a worse outcome than the other. You are having even an even experience. So if something is unfair, 
it's the opposite of this. And when people feel like something is unfair, this can lead to conflict. Uh, so this might be uh, a word you need to use to bring up an issue. We also have unreasonable. So you see this UN prefix, un, this means that something is not something. So if something is unreasonable, it means it's not reasonable, it doesn't make sense, it's not in line with reason, which is good sense, it does not make sense. Poor, if you describe something as poor, this means that it is of bad quality. So you might, uh, poor management might lead to conflict, for example, or poor communication. If you don't communicate well with your colleagues, this can lead to, uh, to conflict. We also have the word unclear. Again, using that same, uh, that same prefix. So if something is unclear, then it is difficult to understand. And if you are not understanding each other, you might have a misunderstanding. And this can lead to conflict too. We have the word negative. So of course, if something is negative, it's not positive, it's not good, it's bringing you down. It might be hostile. Maybe someone is being very critical. They are criticizing your, uh, your actions or maybe your work. That would be being negative. And finally, something might be disruptive. And uh, disruption can lead to conflict too. So if something is disruptive, it's making your life difficult, it's making an activity difficult, and it's stopping you from doing something. Now let's move on to uh, expressing your feelings. Some words you might like to use if you are telling someone how you feel. First, we have unhappy. Again, the same prefix, so this means you are not happy. Maybe you are sad, you're not, uh, you don't appreciate someone's actions or someone's behavior, and it's made you unhappy. Now, disappointed is also uh, a type of being unhappy. You're not, you're not pleased, uh, but it's specifically because you had an expectation and that expectation has not been met. In that case, you are disappointed. You might also be hurt. Now, this is usually going to be more emotionally hurt in the case of a conflict, because you expect a conflict to be more of an argument. So if someone has uh, caused you some emotional pain, maybe with something that they have said. And uh, offended means pretty much the same thing as hurt. Uh, something has caused you, caused you to be emotionally pained. We also have the word sidelined. Now, if you have been sidelined, this is when you feel like someone has overlooked you. They haven't involved you. They maybe put you to the side. That's where the word comes from, being on the sidelines, maybe in sports. So if you are sidelined, this means you're, uh, you're not involved in something and you're left out. And finally, we have something that uh, makes you uncomfortable or if you feel uncomfortable, this is saying you don't feel at ease, you don't feel relaxed, you uh, are on edge maybe and you're feeling a bit stressed or worried uh, because of a particular action or something someone has said. So now some useful phrases we can use to bring up an issue. So this is when you first go to speak to someone and you want to let them know that there is a problem. To start the conversation, you can use these phrases. So first of all, we might say, I wanted to talk to you about. So I wanted to talk to you. This is saying that I would, I would like to have a conversation with you. And then about is introducing what you want to discuss. So for example, I wanted to talk to you about something that has been bothering me. So if something is bothering you, it's giving you worry, 
it's making you stressed, it's something that uh, is causing you some difficulty. So you could use this phrase to begin a conversation. Again, you might like to say, can we have a chat about? I've added in quick uh, because sometimes people like to play things down. You might say a quick chat, even if it's not quick, just because you don't want to seem like it's a big problem. So by saying quick, you reduce the size of the problem. So you might say, can we have a quick chat about something? This is saying to uh, the colleague or coworker, I would just like to speak to you very quickly. And finally, we have, do you have a minute to? So this is asking if someone has the time to have a conversation. Of course, again, this is playing it down like the previous uh, expression because it probably won't take a minute, but it's just a way of saying it in a bit more of a casual way rather than saying, I have to speak to you about something very urgent, which might seem quite dramatic and might um, start the situation off quite seriously. Instead, if you just say, do you have a minute to? It's a casual way to introduce the conversation. So now let's have a look at what we've learned so far. So can you let me know in the chat if you know what word uh, means that you're sad because something has failed to fulfill your expectations? What do we call uh, that feeling? How would you describe feeling sad because uh, something or someone failed to meet or fulfill your expectations? Does anyone remember? Brilliant, Francoise, that is the perfect answer. Just be a little bit careful of the spelling. I will show you in a second the answer on the screen, but I know that you know the correct word. So brilliant, the answer is disappointed, spelt like this. Uh, just be careful if there's two Ps and it is an I. Thank you very much. Now for this question, as uh, often, there is no one right answer. Um, so everyone have a go. Even if someone else writes an answer, you can still answer with a different suggestion. So can you form a sentence with the phrase, I wanted to let you know that? Can you use this phrase? Does anyone know how we might use this phrase in a sentence? No problem, if not, I realize this is Brilliant, Francoise. So I wanted to let you know that I'm unhappy. Everyone else, you can give it a go. This phrase is actually coming up a little bit later. So no problem if you haven't got an answer yet. Maybe we can have another go at it once we have had a look at this phrase. But the example I gave was I wanted to let you know that I've been feeling a bit uncomfortable at the office recently. And again, this phrase is used to, to introduce your feelings. So now we're going to move on to part two, which is having productive conversations. Now, when we describe something as productive, this means it's going to lead to something good. So instead of just having a big argument where you get angry, the other person is angry, and then you hate each other, that's not what you want because, of course, you're going to probably need to continue to work with them. So it's important you can uh, have a productive conversation that leads to a better situation. So to begin with a productive conversation, you want to be able to share your perspective in a respectful, 
uh, in a respectful way that doesn't make someone else uh, more angry. So here we have the phrase, I wanted to let you know that. So we can use this uh, as Francoise very nicely already did to just introduce an issue again, to say, this is uh, the problem that I've been having and I want to tell you about it. Because otherwise you can, if you don't talk to someone about if you're annoyed, you can build up uh, resentment. And I'll just write that in the chat. But resentment is uh, a feeling that builds up when you don't express uh, how you're feeling towards someone and you start to hate them because you haven't told them what the problem is. We can also use uh, the next uh, three phrases to uh, share our feelings. Now, people say when you are uh, in, a, in a situation of conflict, it's always better to use phrases or sentences that begin with I, because then you are just talking about your own feeling and your own experience. And if you start to say you, you, the other person might feel like you are accusing them of something or that you are speaking for them. So it's great to start your sentences with I, like the next few as well. So to introduce your feelings again, you can say, I feel whatever you feel, and then when you, to explain the specific action that makes you feel like that. Because when you are in a situation of conflict and you're telling someone about the problem, you want to be as specific as possible so the other person knows what to change, what to work on. So you can say, I feel sidelined since you didn't choose me to work on the project. We can also say, I find it when you, this is saying that you feel a certain way. Find is uh, idiomatic here. It just means that you, you think it is a certain way. I find it unreasonable uh, that you're angry when you didn't give clear instructions. And finally, we have the phrase, I am finding it hard to. Now this is used to introduce something that is causing you difficulty, maybe because of an ongoing conflict. So you might say, I'm finding it hard to work with you if someone's being uh, very difficult. And another part of uh, being taking part in a productive conversation is properly listening because it's supposed to be a, a two-way street. This phrase just means something with participation from both sides. So it's not up to you to just speak and not listen. You have to make sure you say what you need to say and then the other person says what they need to say and you listen properly. So here are some phrases which uh, show the other person or the other people that you are listening to what they are saying and that you're really hearing what they are saying. So uh, you of course don't want to overuse these to the point where it sounds like you're not really listening, but uh, they can be useful to, to make the other person feel like they are being heard. So first we have, I see what you mean. This means uh, I understand what you're saying. Again, I understand why you feel that way. Shows that you have listened to what they said and you can understand their perspective. You don't just understand yours, you understand theirs. You can also say that seems fair. This is saying, yes, what you're saying makes sense to me. I can see why you are saying that. And again, that makes sense, means the same thing. And finally, I get that. That means, yes, I understand. I have heard, uh, I have heard that point and I understand why you are saying it. And finally, another part of having a productive conversation is being able to take responsibility for your actions. So it won't always be the case that it's always just the other person's fault. 
uh, when you're approaching conflict and thinking like that can sometimes be uh, damaging. So a large part of uh, having a productive conversation is being able to understand where you have made a mistake and, uh, and here are some phrases to help you do that. So first we have, I acknowledge that. So if you acknowledge something, this means that you see it you say, yes, this is the case. So for example, you might say, I acknowledge that I could have done things differently. This is saying, I realize that I could have done things differently. We also have, I admit that. Now, if you admit something, this means you say, okay, that is true. Uh, you, you, you confess that something is true. So you might say, I admit that I wasn't the most clear. So that's you taking your responsibility and saying, yes, it's true. I was not the most clear. And maybe that's what led to the conflict. Finally, you can say it was never my intention to. Now, when you use this, you can, it's uh, useful since it allows you to acknowledge how you've made someone else feel even if it's not uh, not what you meant to do, it's still what you ended up doing. So you can just say, it was never my intention to make you feel that way, but I realize now that I did make you feel that way. So now let's move on to uh, testing our knowledge. So can any of you use this phrase to make a full sentence? Perhaps if you've experienced conflict at your own workplace, you might have an example in mind uh, about a time that someone or some conflict has made something uh, difficult. How would you use this uh, phrase in a sentence? Does anyone have any ideas for how we can use this phrase in a sentence? There are no, there's no one right answer as per usual. I'm finding it hard to be outlined in that project. Do you maybe mean sidelined in this situation, Francoise, if you've been left out of the project? Um, since outlined in this case wouldn't really make sense. Okay, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, so that's a great sentence. So I'm finding it hard uh, to be sidelined in that project. I'm finding it hard being sidelined would be maybe a bit more natural. Uh, you're not enjoying the fact that you are have been sidelined and not included. Does anyone else have any uh, sentences? Thank you very much, Francoise, for that one. Does anyone else have any ideas of how we can use that in a sentence? If not, we have, I have an example, which is, I am finding it hard to tell you how I feel. Maybe it's not always difficult to be honest about your feelings, so this might happen to you. And finally, can you fill in the gaps to complete this phrase. Can you remember what goes in the gaps to form, a, to form a sentence that you can use to show someone that you are listening? Can anyone fill in the gaps? Does anyone remember this phrase? Does anyone have any ideas? Well, that would work, <laughs> Francoise. So I cannot say that that is wrong. I understand that you feel like that is a perfectly uh, grammatical sentence. So absolutely correct. Uh, great that you spotted another way to say that as well, another way to use this gap. Uh, the example I had was, I understand why you feel like that, but you could say, I understand that you feel like that. That's saying, I understand that you have your feelings, 
so it's another good thing to say when you are uh, showing someone that you are listening. Thank you very much. And finally, we're going to move on to a solution. So of course, once you've uh, addressed your conflict, you've had a conversation, now you need to think about the future, think about how you're going to stop a conflict, making it impossible for you to work together because you will probably need to continue working together. Now, a great way to start is by apologizing. So when you apologize, this is you saying sorry, you are uh, admitting your fault, you are acknowledging that you did something wrong and that there is something to apologize for. So we can say, I am sorry for, and this would be followed by a noun or an ing verb. So we might say, I am sorry for raising my voice. We can also say, I am sorry that I, and this is followed by uh, the base form of the verb. So I am sorry that I criticized your work like that or um, I'm sorry that I raised uh, my voice like that. So you just uh, can conjugate the verb uh, like that in the past. Uh, we have I uh, apologize for another way to, uh, of course, give your apology. Uh, I apologize for offending you. You can also follow this by a noun. So I apologize for the way I treated you. And you can say, I owe you an apology. So to owe someone an apology, if you have done something wrong, you need to give them an apology. So those are some ways to apologize. And now for some ways to discuss uh, some further steps. So once you have apologized, you can talk a bit more about what you're going to do to fix it uh, in the future. So first of all, we have, I will make an effort to. Now, if you say, I will make an effort to, you are saying that I will keep in mind that I need to do something. I will try harder to do something. So for instance, I will make an effort to communicate more clearly. You can also say, I am happy to talk about. Now, this is you saying that you are happy for the conversation to continue. You don't think everything is finished. You maybe want to discuss it more. So you can say, I'm happy to talk about the matter further. Now, the matter is just the subject, the conflict, whatever has happened. We can also say, what can I do to, as a question, and this means you're asking for someone else's viewpoint, someone else's opinion on how you can change your behavior to hopefully avoid conflict in the future. So we can say, what can I do to stop this happening again? And finally, you can say, would you be open to? Now, if someone is open to something, this means they will accept it, they are willing to try something. And of course, if you want someone to, uh, to join you in doing something, join you in moving forward, you might say, would you be open to a compromise? This is saying, uh, would you be happy for us to compromise? And finally, we have some idioms all relating to uh, resolving conflict. So first we have see eye to eye. If you see eye to eye with someone, this means you are uh, understanding them, they are understanding you, you are agreeing. So for instance, you might say, we haven't always seen eye to eye. This means we haven't always agreed. Maybe we had conflict before but now we uh, have resolved the problem. We have to bury the hatchet. If you bury the hatchet with someone, this means that you, uh, you get over your problem, you get over your conflict, 
and you're no longer uh, arguing anymore or in disagreement. We also have to clear the air. Now, if you clear the air with someone, you discuss any particular issues you might have so that you can get along and so that you no longer have any problems. We also have the phrase to agree, to disagree. Now, sometimes even after you've had a very productive conversation, you might not agree. But this doesn't mean that you can't move forward. So you might say, well, we will agree to disagree, but we need to continue working together. So this just means that you're never going to share an opinion, but you will agree that uh, you, can, you can move past it. We also have the phrase water under the bridge. Now, if you say to someone that is water under the bridge, this means, oh, we're not arguing about this anymore. This is an old problem and we don't need to worry anymore. Don't worry, I am over it, basically saying I don't hold anything against you for that. And finally, we have to extend an olive branch. Now, if you extend an olive branch, this means that you make an effort to uh, resolve a conflict, you make an effort to, uh, to end an argument. So those are all your idioms. Now, can anyone find the mistake in this sentence and write the correct form? So the sentence is, I am sorry for shout during our conversation. Where is the mistake and how would you write this sentence correctly? Does anyone know? Let me know in the chat. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you so much. So you have all got it completely correct. The issue was uh, the, the verb for shout four needs to be followed by an ing verb. So you all got it right. It's I'm sorry for shouting during our conversation. And finally, what idiom means to express uh, an effort, to make an effort to, uh, to end an argument or a confrontation? Does anyone remember? What is the idiom? That means to make an effort to end an argument or end a conflict. Now, a confrontation for people who don't know is just uh, a moment where you uh, start talking about maybe a difficult subject, you start talking about an issue. So what do we call an effort to, uh, to try and end an argument or end a conflict. What idiom can we use? So you can use the uh, you can use the phrase "Let's agree to disagree" to end. A, uh, a conversation or an argument. But Romina, exactly, that's what I was looking for. The actual effort, what we call the, uh, the act of making the effort to, uh, to end a conversation, end a confrontation, uh, is to extend an olive branch. Brilliant. So that brings us to uh, the end of our webinar for this week. Please let me know if you have any questions. Do any of you have any questions after this webinar? I hope you found it useful and that you learned something. I'll just give you a few moments to write in the chat if you have any questions at all. You're welcome. Thank you very much for coming. Brilliant. Thank you so much for coming everyone and for participating in uh, the questions as always. Um, 
Brilliant. Si ce webinaire vous a plu et que vous souhaitez approfondir votre pratique de l'anglais, n'hésitez pas à faire une demande d'information sur notre site Internet. Nous serons heureux de vous présenter nos formations en détail et même de vous proposer un test de niveau gratuit à l'oral avec un de nos professeurs. So please do come and see us if you want to continue learning, uh, learning your English. And I hope to see you next time. I hope you have a lovely rest of the week. Bye-bye. Uh,